But let's get a better understanding of something that's going to play a major role in the coming New Age world religion. The mysteries, or mystery religions. I've covered it extensively on this broadcast. Hours and hours and hours and hours. And I've given you extensive bibliographies, and I'm going to give you more. Mystery religions are defined by the New Columbia Encyclopedia 4th Edition as, quote, in Greek and Roman religion, some important secret cults. Although the mystic rites were kept secret, it was known that they required elaborate initiations, including accepting occult knowledge and acting out a sacred drama. Since the mystery deities were associated primarily with fertility, many scholars believe that these cults were based on unrecorded primitive fertility rites, end quote. Now, of course, Lucifer's true goal regarding what Bailey has hinted at is man's destiny, of course, according to the Bible, is to enslave him in his one world religion and his visible or externalized kingdom on the earth, which will restore to mankind these mysteries, including their sacred drama. To some people... Talking about Satan as if he actually existed is a sign of mental retardation. And I have to tell you that these people who believe these things do not believe in Satan. They do not believe in a devil. They do not believe in a real being called Lucifer, nor do they believe in a God called Jehovah or Adonai or anything else. The whole key to the understanding of all of this lies in your knowledge that they believe these things to be metaphors for an evolutionary process which gave man intellect, through the use of which man will become God. They believe that there is some great power in the universe that connects all things, but it is not God. They call it the great architect of the universe. But you have to understand that their conception is that this is an architect. An architect does not create anything. An architect takes what is created and builds with it. That should give you a little better understanding of some of this. They believe that religion created the concept of gods and angels and Satans and devils and Lucifers and all of these other things, and that these religions, using these dogmas and teachings, have persecuted man and have prevented the use of his intellect and has, in fact, hindered the ultimate destiny of the perfection of the human race and the apotheosis of mankind. Now, I know that some of this is going over some of your heads. But if you just stick with me, it may become clear to you. Science, such as it is of psychology, is founded in the scientific naturalism of the 19th century. And the metaphysical and mythological assumptions of that science still underlie a great deal of psychological thinking in behaviorism eminently, but also, to a large extent, in official psychoanalysis. Indeed, one might say that psychoanalysis is based on Newtonian mechanics and, in fact, could be called psychohydraulics. <laughs> Not that that analogy is altogether uh, inappropriate, because there are certainly respects in which our psychic life flows and exhibits the dynamics of water. But, of course, we want to know what kind of water. And for the scientific naturalism of the 19th century, the basic energies of nature were considered to be very much inferior to human consciousness in quality. Ernst Haeckel, the biologist of that time, would think of the energy of the universe as blind energy. 
And correspondingly, it seems to me that Freud thought of the libido as essentially blind, unconscious energy, embodying only a kind of formless, unstructured, and insatiable lust. This is a generalization. Some modification in that thinking is, of course, possible. But the tendency is to regard all that which lies below the surface of human consciousness as being less evolved, because you must remember that this was also the time of Darwin's theories of evolution, of seeing the human mind as a fortuitous development from much more primitive forms of life coming forth by purely mechanical processes, by natural selection and by the survival of the fittest. And therefore, man was in general seen as a fluke of nature, an embodiment of reason, emotion, and values for which the more basic processes of nature had no sympathy and about which they did not care. If, therefore, the human race is to flourish, we must take charge of evolution, left to spontaneous process, but we must be directed by human ingenuity, despite the fact that although our brains are capable of dealing with a colossal number of variables at once, our conscious attention is not. Most people cannot consider more than three variables at the same time without using a pencil. And this shows that in many ways the scanning process of man's conscious attention is very inadequate for dealing with the infinitely many variables, the multidimensional processes of the natural universe. However, a serious attempt has been made and scientific naturalism issued in a fantastic fight with nature. In this whole notion of the conquest and subordination of nature, which has, as a matter of fact, very ancient, non-scientific and biblical origins, with the idea of man as the head and chief and ruler of nature in the image of God. And the time has now dawned upon us all when our attempts to beat nature into submission are having alarming results. Because we see that it's very dangerous to mess around with processes that we don't understand, that have enormous numbers of variables, and we begin to wonder whether we hadn't better let well enough alone. <laughs>